Hello, Captains. This is The Doctor, and today we've got a new featured episode to play in Star Trek Online. Now, this is brand new to me. I did not know this was coming. I have to be honest, I have not kept up with the news too much recently in Star Trek Online, but I was browsing or skimming over the news page today, and I saw that they've released a new featured episode even though it's not a new season. This is between seasons right now. We're in season 13.5 currently. Yet here is a new featured episode. So I'm very happy about this. Now I'm going in completely blind about this new mission. All I know, because all I've seen, is a picture of LeVar Burton. That's right, LeVar Burton, Jordy LaForge, apparently in this mission. Other than that... That's all I know. This is a completely blind playthrough. First time I've heard about this mission, so I'm going to play it, and we'll see what happens. If it's interesting enough, I may do it on multiple characters. I'm not sure. But right now, I'm going to start off playing on my primary character. This is the Doctor. He is my science character, and so I have a complete ground science setup on him. Uh, it is a temporal uh, operative setup. So for all my ground powers is uh, temporal stuff. Now for my starship today, I'm going to be flying an advanced research vessel, Tier 6. Uh, this is because I am testing this ship right now for a future starship review. And I recently got this ship, and so that's what I've got equipped today. Uh, and I am running, what am I running? I have the Lucari stuff on this ship. So right now I've got Piso, Piso Polaron weaponry on this ship and I'm using the Lucari space set all the Lucari restoration stuff so that's what's on this ship right now just so you're aware of what I'll be flying I don't know if there will be a lot of space involved in this or a lot of ground I'm just not sure so let's get into this I'm very excited the mission is called beyond the nexus the Alliance has sent you to aid legendary Starfleet Captain Geordi LaForge in investigating the Nexus, a stellar phenomenon that visits this part of the galaxy only once every 39.1 years. Remember to replay the mission next week for another exclusive reward. Greetings, I have new orders for you beyond the Nexus. We recently received a distress signal from the USS Forrestal, a ship we thought was lost in the Nexus back in 2332. We sent the USS Madison out to investigate, but they haven't checked in for some time. Considering the Nexus is involved, they could be in trouble. The Madison's last known position was in the Rotenev system. Meet with the USS Challenger there to investigate the situation. Her captain has some experience with the Nexus. Oh, okay. Uh, looking forward to this. So, um... I've got, I've got to do some math, which I'll do off screen here after I record this video, because it comes every 39 or whatever years, and we know that it came around in the TNG era, uh, or post-TNG with the uh, Star Trek Generations movie, uh, and I need to go look and see what year that was. I forget, but I'm sure people in the comments will remind me the year of that, and then how that corresponds to where we are in the Star Trek Online timeline. Uh, trying to just piece it all together. So that'll be interesting. I want to I know how those timelines interact there. All right, so we've got a featured episode, Weekly Reward, Dilithium, and it looks like some kind of new set is coming. Um, we'll look at all these rewards at the end of the mission, but for right now, let's get it on. Let's, let's do this thing. Need to go to the Rotenev system. I'm not sure where that's at. Never heard of that before. Where is that in the galaxy? Rotenev, Rotenev, Rotenev. What uh, part of the galaxy is that in? I have no idea where that's at. Let's warp out and see if it's in this part of the galaxy. If it's not, we'll go to the other one. Yeah, I'm not familiar with uh, that system there. So, it's not in this neck of the woods. So, it's over here in the other neck of the woods. I just want to see where it's located on a map, because I'm curious. 
So it's going to probably be in the alpha quadrant. Go to Rotenev. Okay, so it's way up here where all the Zenkethi stuff has been. I just wanted to see where it was because it might deal with some of the Zenkethi stuff. And right now we're in that Zenkethi storyline. If you look under episodes, it's called New Frontiers. It's that whole Zenkethi storyline. I'm guessing they'll end up putting this mission after Brushfire. That's what I'm guessing. Okay, well, let's go to the Rutenev system. My ship doesn't want to turn. <laughs> there we go. The auto navigate won't turn the ship. That's weird. I don't know if that's a bug or not. That should auto turn the ship, but it's not. Okay, well, let's just go transwarp right there. That way we won't wait too long. Alright, here we are, Rotenev. Rotenev is a binary star system with no settlements. The system is mainly known for lying within the path of the stellar phenomenon known as the Nexus. I wonder if you can see it. Wouldn't that be cool if they had it in the uh, in the uh, space zone here so you could see it like moving through or something? I don't see it. That's a shame. That's a missed opportunity right there. Anyways, let's start. Again, I got no idea what to expect. Are we going to go into the Nexus? Because that would be kind of freaky. Good to see you again. Looks like the two missing ships are here, although they're both in a disabled state. Neither of them have responded to our hails. Now correct me if I'm wrong, but why is he saying good to see you again? Have we met? Uh, if I recall correctly, this is the first time Jordy LaForge has been in Star Trek Online. Or at least the first time LeVar Burton has been voicing him. Have we met him in some past mission that I have forgotten? Please remind me in the comments if I have forgotten about that, and I do apologize if we have, but I cannot recall where we have met him before in this game. Huh. Well, anyway, he's being voiced by LeVar Burton. Oh, my gosh. This is great. I love it. That's entirely possible. Even minimal exposure to the Nexus can be pretty disruptive to ship systems. I think we should take a closer look. Things could be worse than our initial scans have indicated. Let's get closer to them. So here's the Nexus. So, yeah, that's it. Um, we should probably keep our distance, though. We know what happens. The Challenger. That's right. He flies the Challenger. Is that a Galaxy-class starship? I believe so, yes. Okay. Apologies. The ship's taken some damage here. Short-range comms are barely working, and we're experiencing widespread systems failure on all decks. Our Nexus defense screen's overloaded, and we were exposed to a full blast. We're lucky to be here. We could use your help. Wait a minute. We have Nexus defense screens? Well, that's new. Something's not right here. I worked on the Nexus Defense Screens project, and a catastrophic failure like that seems unlikely. In an overload situation like she described, the ship wouldn't be disabled. It'd be destroyed. Uh-oh. Well, let's get a short-range scan. Something may be amiss. Good thing we're in a science ship. <laughs> and exploring the Nexus. All right. Something does seem to be up here. There's the Madison. We got the Forestall. Trying to look at the class of ships, they both look like cruisers to me. Um, Galaxy, maybe. They're all cruisers, definitely. Okay, moving forward. I'm moving forward slowly, just in case something happens. 
I'm picking up some Nexus radiation and signs of minor combat damage on both ships, but nothing close to what the captain of the Madison was claiming. Admiral, the Madison has raised shields to powering up their weapons. Red alert, all hands, battle stations. Crap. There's... It's definitely a galaxy class. Why is it firing at us? Or the Challenger, anyway. Not at us. Whatever they fired just Warning. disrupted most Ship of our systems. Attack. We're sitting ducks over here. Yeah. Well, why am I firing on the floor? Oh, because of that antimatter spread. Duh. So we gotta take her out, I guess. Target shield has failed. I don't want to give it too much. I don't want to destroy it. We're still trying to figure out what they hit us with over here. Whatever it was, it knocked most of our systems out. We're running on emergency power. I think we'd better get over there and find out what's going on while we still have a functioning ship between us. Meet me at these coordinates on deck 10. Okay. Deck 10 it is. I just wanted to point out that she was real easy to take down. I didn't give it all of my powers, but I was tempted to. Anyway, let's beam over. Uh, yeah, we'll take my healer because who knows what I'll need over there. guess we're only getting one bridge officer on this. Probably won't be too much battle then, in that Looks case. Looks like someone activated the security system on this deck. Fortunately, I know a thing or two about that system. The console here is offline, but there should be a functional one nearby in a holodeck. From there, we can access the system and shut the fields down. If you say so. Sounds like a plan. Oh, he vanished. Oh, he's back. That was weird. I want to go this way, though. What's this way? There's absolutely nothing this way. There's a door. There's, where does this door go? I have to know. <laughs> so, we're definitely on Galaxy Class. This is great, though. It looks good. I mean, it looks really good. Okay. So, we need to go to a holodeck. I mean, this is classic TNG era Enterprise D This holodeck's here. damaged. Let's try the next one. I love this. It looks really good. All right, let's get to work. With luck, we should be able to bypass the system and drop those... Wait. Wait. Something wrong, Captain? Someone's loading up a holodeck program in here, and I've got a feeling it's not for R&R. &R. Uh-oh. Ready weapons. Shoot. Activating program Barkley, 42 Epsilon. Safety protocols are disengaged. No. Oh, a Borg ship. Please, help us. The Borg are everywhere. Defeat the Borg. Program's locked. We'll have to survive the battle to leave. Um, okay. That's no problem. We'll just set up some of these. Last wave. Unless they change the program. Yes, run into the electricity. Oh, thank you. If there's anything I can do to repay you, anything at all. Oh, dear. <laughs> I have a computer pause program. That's definitely a Red Barkley program. Let's get back to business. We'd better bypass security before they send more sparring partners to deal with. Okay. The textures in here look really good. I mean, it looks like they've beefed up their graphics a little bit in these uh, new missions here. I'm liking it. It looks really good. Bypass security system. Ooh, okay. Uh, one of these thingies.
Okay, that did it. Security systems are down on this deck, and they won't be putting us into another holodeck scenario anytime soon. All right, excellent. That was so cool, Commander though. Commander Tabai, please respond. I repeat, if you can hear this, come to 10 forward at once. There's... We're barely reading you here. Our defenses just dropped. We require your assistance. They are closing on us. Hurry. It won't be long before they attack. Who's going to attack? Someone's jamming that signal. We'd better get to 10 forward. Tell you what, uh... Lavar sounding great as Jordy in this. I mean, he sounds just like he used to. I mean, he's doing a really good job pulling that character back out. It's it's just working really well. He he actually sounds happy. I mean, listen to the intuition in his voice. He's like he's like jolly. It's like jolly Jordy. Jolly Jordy, that's what we're going to call him today. He's doing really good. I like it. Once this way. I just want to see where all these corridors go. Never know what hidden secrets are around the corner. I think that's 10 forward right there. Guess we can't get in anywhere else. I'm just checking. Okay, well, nobody's attacking at all, so what the heck? Is the bartender attacking you? <laughs> this looks very, very, very much like um, Generations, the movie. The lighting in here, check that out. Remember how that movie was like gold colored? It's like the whole movie had a gold filter over it because of the uh, star outside. The way it was coming in the windows, the light in that movie gave it a very, very, very um, intense color scheme. <laughs> and uh, they've definitely brought that back right here in Ten Ford. Thank you for coming. The Madison has been taken over by hostile forces. Oh. And we are in dire need of assistance. Where are they then? And who are they? We responded to a distress call from USS Forrestal. Long thought lost to the Nexus. Right. As we closed to assist, the Madison was struck by a potent beam of psionic energy. Okay. It disabled the ship and left us vulnerable to attack. Mind-controlled members of the Forrestal's crew then beamed over and took control of this vessel. We few are all that remain free. Let me guess, because it sounds to me like Undine, but I don't know why, because we're not at war with them anymore. Okay, so who or what is behind this? An alien of tremendous psionic ability, formerly trapped within the Nexus. We believe it lured the Forestall there in an escape attempt, which failed. Somehow, it was able to break free when the Nexus recently returned. Though powerful, there are limits to the alien's ability. The combat with your ship has weakened it considerably. Now is the time to strike. The controlled crew are bound to attack again soon. Okay, set weapons to stun if they do. Picking up transporter signals, multiple contacts. Incoming. We've got incoming. Okay, gotta fight these crew members. Enemy contacts, inbound. I'm rooted. Now I'll try to come in. <laughs> Looks like we bought ourselves a little time. We should discuss our next move soon. You might talk with some of the survivors here for more information as well. Your call. Yeah, I need to find out who these people are that are attacking us. It sounds like Undine, but I'm, I'm not sure. Ensign Saitel, security. Your arrival is most fortuitous. Our numbers have dwindled considerably since the enemy's initial assault. Until your arrival, I calculated our odds of survival at 4,286 to 1. Okay difficult to fully assess at this juncture. However, I am willing to state that our odds have improved considerably. If all of you were psionics, our odds would be even better. 
The alien is quite ineffective against those with mental abilities. I see. Carry on, Ensign. Do the forge last. Do her last too. Let's do the bartender. Oh, am I glad to see you. Things were looking more than a little ugly until you got here. I'd pour you a drink, but all of the replicators went offline an hour ago. How are you holding up? As good as can be, under the circumstances. Still amazed we haven't been, um, <clears throat> dominated by that alien. The commander thinks it's because we all come from a species with psionic abilities. As good a reason as any, I suppose. Hmm. Okay. Ensign Rana, Engineering. Sorry for staring, Captain LaForge. Your work on transwarp theory was required reading at the Academy. I never thought I'd actually meet you. Wish it were under different circumstances. Report, Ensign. Right. Well, they, they hit main engineering first. If you're going down there, be on your guard. Several of us tried to take it back a couple of days ago. They beamed in and took us by surprise. I was the only one to make it back here. All right. Don't let it wear you down. And, uh, LaForge. LaForge? Speak to me. I have a feeling these attacks will intensify as the alien gains strength. If we're going to do something to save this ship, we'll need to do it fast. Let's get down to main engineering. I think we can get a better grip on the security system there and use it to incapacitate both the hostile crew and the alien. Take okay. these psionic inhibitors with you. We hope to use them on some of our dominated crewmates prior to your arrival. But I suspect they will serve you better at this time. They should protect you if the alien attempts to take control of your mind. I just realized most of everybody on the ship is a Vulcan? That's kind of weird. So that's what she meant by if we were psionics, because we're not. Why is this crew mostly psionics? That's weird. Also, how do I get to engineering? Apparently not this way. Oh, I was in space for a second. Retake the ship from engineering. Here we go. Watch it! They're beaming in reinforcements. Uh, no they're not. Oh yes they are. <laughs> okay. Heads up! More hostiles incoming! Oh, they're like right behind us. Talk to a forge. We've got a couple of problems here. Main power's offline, and there's a lot of Nexus radiation getting past the screens. I'll handle the power situation while you deal with the radiation. Once that's done, we can bring the security systems back online. Okay, recalibrate stuff and do things. Oh, this is so cool. I'm in engineering. Look at that. I mean, this is like, I think this is the first mission ever in Star Trek Online that's like had proper galaxy class interior like proper proper interior and proper proper engineering like this looks something from the TV set right here this is great and it's really detailed and looks really good the textures are very crisp and very clear I like this sorry I'm getting a bit geeky on ya
Nice work. Radiation levels are back in the safe zone, and I've managed to prime the warp core. Give me a hand with it, and we can restore main power. This is just... This is just too awesome. I mean, just... I'm... I'm overwhelmed with how good this looks right now. I want all of this. That did it. Main power's back online, and the warp core is stable. I've activated most of the security systems, but it looks like the bridge is still under enemy control. It's a good bet that's where the alien is. Okay. Go to the bridge. This is just phenomenal. Hmm, I love it. This ship and all upon it belong to Cosmur. Starfleet okay. disagrees with you on that. That is not an undine. <laughs> no words mean nothing. Kill them. Kill them now. That is definitely not an undine. Enemy targets on sensors. We are here to assist you. Oh, I did the wrong thing. I did the wrong thing twice. The bridge is mine! Oh, man, I have electrified this entire bridge. All the electricity! All your electricity belongs to me. Holy crap. I just, like, annihilated everything on this bridge with electricity. <laughs> I'm reading the alien on sensors. It's back on the forestall. This isn't over yet. The Challenger might be able to fight, but most of this ship's crew is unconscious. Beam back to your ship and deal with the forestall. I'll do what I can here to get the shields up and keep the Madison in one piece. I don't want to beam over just yet because I just want to check things out. What can I say? I'm I'm nostalgic at the moment. This is so good looking. A little small. It's a little small. It should be bigger, size-wise, obviously. But, considering it's a game, you know, not bad at all. This is very, very cool. We can't go anywhere, can we? No. I mean, this is just... This is classic Enterprise D here. No refits. Nothing's different. I mean, it's got the panels here. No consoles on here like the movie Enterprise had. You know, so... Classic design here. And here's a ready room. Oh my gosh. Accolade complete. Ready for anything. I love it. See, that's why you got to go exploring, guys. There's a galaxy class there. There's... There's... What is that? A ship. A gold ship. A replicator. A little bed. This is great. I mean, the detail in this mission is really good for just one mission. This leads me to believe, are they perhaps going to be doing something else with the uh, galaxy interior in the future? Are we going to be seeing more stuff that has to deal with the galaxy class? Because um, we've gone to a lot of trouble to like recreate this the interior of this ship very well. And it just leads me to believe that um, maybe there's going to be more to it. Maybe there's going to be more to deal with in the future. Does this not look like Kess? To you from a distance I swore for a second that was Kess from Voyager it just looked like her from a distance the outfit and the hair anyway okay now let's beam over how do I return to my ship Jordy where's the return to my ship button there's no return to my ship button this is not a good thing oh it's hiding why is it hiding hold on just one second my low priority interactions are hiding I'm reading the alien on the challenger Behind might everything. Admiral, we're being held by the forestall. I think it's the alien. Shall the battle continue? Shall you strike me anew again and again until nothing remains? Stand down and the fight's over. Cast away for defying those who call themselves my rulers. 
Jailers. And now a new jailer comes, demanding submission. Release the ship and her crew. No, I need this ship and everyone on it. They give me what I need to return home and avenge my imprisonment. I will not give them up. I love the way this has turned and is not at all what I expected. I am getting vibes of Star Trek V here. Remember the alien that was imprisoned in the center of the galaxy? Uh, imprisoned there? Um, some say there's theories that that may have been some sort of proto-Q or some kind of Q cousin. But anyway, regardless of those theories, I'm getting those vibes. Here we have a very powerful alien person, creature, thing, whatever... Uh, imprisoned this time in in the nexus by somebody else and he's obviously extremely powerful more powerful than us so i love that it's got that, that that vibe from that movie too so it's both it's both generations it's star trek 5 uh we've got all these different elements combined here in this mission and i'm loving it to death and we have a mysterious alien we've never seen or heard about before that is classic Star Trek. That's Star Trek, the original series. That's going out exploring and finding a new powerful weird alien that entraps you and then you have to fight your way out and blah, blah, blah. That's Kirk-style Star Trek right there, and I'm playing it. This is great. The Challenger stands ready to assist you. Warning. Ship is under attack. Well, that was quite easy. <laughs> Answer hail. It seems I am at your mercy. Will you strike the killing blow now, as is your right? No, you'll be taken into custody alive. If that is to be my fate, I yield. The ship and crew are yours. It is an unexpected mercy. What I would not extend to a vanquished foe on the battlefield. Ajbur. Much has changed since my banishment to the Nexus. You made the right choice. I wonder how long he's been in the Nexus then. That implies a very long time. Admiral, we're being held by the Madison. Nicely done. I was able to get a call into Starfleet, and we should have backup here soon. In the meantime, I'll keep working with the crews of the disabled ships. We'll have them up and running again in no time. Glad Saved to hear it. a lot of lives here today. You showed mercy to someone who wasn't inclined to return the favor. That goes a long way in my book. Thank you, Captain. You're welcome. Once we're done here, we'll go back to working with the Lucari on a big project. I'm ready. I enjoyed seeing their protomatter technology firsthand. Hopefully, we won't run into any Zenkethi trouble while we're out there. I'd rather not see their protomatter weapon in action if I can avoid it. Likewise, safe travels, Captain. All decks have reported in to part system. I like the fact that this mission is not has nothing to do with the Lucari or the Zenkethi. A completely separate mission that's just a fun Star Trek mission. This is what I want in my Star Trek. Exploration, new things, new mysteries, and boy do we have a new mystery now, and just a fun storyline. That's Star Trek. And that's what this game should be and what it needs. And this is just a great break from the Zenkethi stuff right here. I love it. This We need more of this between seasons. More, more, more. Um, so my big question is, obviously, who is this alien? Uh, we've never seen anything like this alien. I mean, we've seen aliens with similar kind of powers. This one uh, is not as powerful as a Q. So definitely not on that power level. Just happens to be a really strong psychically inclined kind of character but who is he what's his race where's he from he's been imprisoned in the nexus for a long time uh maybe before humans even existed it sounds like and what was his crime who imprisoned him there and why i love that mystery i love the idea of just bumping into a brand new species we've never heard of or seen before you know just outright like that we need more of that kind of discovery. Uh, so I really like that. This is this is really positive 
positive, positive, fun mission to play in Star Trek Online. Let's turn this in. Hail Starfleet. Mm, interesting report. This alien was trapped for eons in the Nexus and wanted to leave? As I understand it, the Nexus is a paradise. Apparently there's at least one life form out there who disagrees. Fortunately, you saved a lot of lives and three Starfleet vessels. Captain LaForge tells me they'll spend some time in space dock, but they'll be ready for duty again soon. And we can use all the ships we can get on the frontier these days. Well done. All right. So we can pick from an engineering reinforced armaments console. This is a, a an engineering console. This gives you a very large power transfer rate and a plus 20 starship hull restoration for hull healing and a hull capacity plus 20. This would be very good on an escort. Let me tell you, I've got an escort, in fact, that I want to put this console on because it will not only give me more uh, shield or more hull capacity, which my escorty ship needs, um, but it'll also help with hull restoration when I heal the hull because I do that a lot on that ship. And it increases power transfer rate more than those new um, those new Xenotech ones do in the uh, latest holding, the latest fleet holding they put up. These actually have a higher power transfer rate than those. So this can be very good on an escort right here. And it also is part of a set called Trilithium Laced Weaponry. So we've got an Omnidirectional Energy Weapon. Trilithium Tricobalt Torpedo Launcher, and then this Reinforced Armaments. Put them all together, you get something called Speed Tweaks, and then something called Reinforced Engineering. So let's go ahead and we'll take that. We can also get a High Density Beam Rifle Type 3 24th Century. High Density Beam Rifle. I wonder why 24th Century. Is that what that means, 24th Century? Hmm. Phaser damage, high density beam rifle. I'm just trying to think what it's a Type Three beam rifle. I'm gonna have to, uh, I'm gonna have to get that as well and try it out on ground. I will play this mission again, and I will get that weapon as well. But for today, I'm gonna take the reinforced armaments. And then looks like September 19th, we get the Trilithium Tricobalt torpedo launcher. Um, what kind of energy type? I guess it's Tricobalt with a Trilithium lace on it does kinetic damage, it does radiation damage, does a lot of critical severity. And then on September 26th, we have an option of Trilithium Enhanced Omnidirectional Phaser Beam Array, Accuracy, Arc, and Damage. And then we have a Trilithium Enhanced Phaser Turret. Uh, I don't know if the turret is part of the set or not. Obviously, the omnidirectional energy weapon, I guess it is. I guess one of these you have to have on there. It has to be an omnidirectional energy weapon. Both of these are omnidirectional, obviously. Uh, so you probably, one of these you have to have on there to be part of the set, but either one would work, apparently. So it's interesting to note that this new trilithium-enhanced stuff is phaser energy-based. So this will be good on a phaser build if you have a lot of phaser tactical consoles saved up and you've got a good phaser build. Uh, maybe you will want to try out the trilithium enhanced phaser stuff here. You'll have to have the directional phaser beam or the turret or both. You'll need the tricobalt torpedo and then of course the armaments here. Uh, I do have a couple of phaser based characters and so I will try this set out on them. But uh, it'll give me a while. Give me. It'll take me a while, obviously, to get all the parts because the last one's not even going to be available until September 26th. But once all the parts are available, I will get them all and I will try them out for you guys on a starship, on a phaser-based starship, and we'll see how these uh, how these things work, how well they do. Uh, I'm also going to get the. Well, let's. You know what? Since I'm going to do that. And I'm not going to do that on this character, because it's not phaser-based. Let me go ahead and take the beam rifle today. Because on this character, I won't be using this set. But it'll be a different character that I used that set on. So let me go ahead and get the high-density beam rifle and check that out. 
So let's collect that reward. And I want to check this out now. Uh, I want to do a ground mission now while we're here. And check out this ground weapon that we just got. So stay with me real quick. This is a high density beam rifle type 3. Does phaser damage. Uh, obviously I don't have it upgraded yet. Let's just uh, let's take my primary weapon off. Put this weapon in. Let's go do something on ground real quick. And we will just take a quick look at what uh, what this thing does. I think we'll just go to the Kobali, good old Kobali homeworld. And I think we'll be able to fire it off there. Delta Quadrant Transwarp. Just to do a little quick demonstration and see how it works. This won't be the actual powers because I think you're like 10 levels... They ranks you down like 10 levels on the Kobali homeworld, I think. But we, I just want to see what it does and how it interacts and what makes it what makes it special. So let's look at it a little closer. Phaser damage times 2, 97.1 DPS, 5% chance to stun. Okay, minus 50% run speed plus 20% critical severity. Cylindrical AOE phaser damage and repel. 5% chance to stun, 50 run speed, 20... Okay, so... I don't know. It doesn't look all that appealing to me personally. Maybe it will to somebody else. To me personally, it doesn't. Well, we'll just fire it off a couple of times and see what it looks like. Beam to Kobali Prime. And uh, hopefully we can come down here and just shoot a few, and uh, a few vodwars. Let's get it out and take a look at it. That's what it looks like. Yeah, let's see. We are at level 51 currently. It's 138 DPS at level 51. Obviously, that's not the true level 60 powers of it. I just want to see how it fires. See how well it works. Give me some Vodwars. Here we go. Yeah. It's pretty much just a single beam phaser high density beam I guess Well, that's how it works anyway. You guys get the idea. You see how it works. Not very appealing in my mind. Um, a weapon that I won't be using, obviously. I like my, my uh, Iconian weapon a lot better. But anyway, it goes in the inventory and pretty much will stay there forever and never get touched. <laughs> so yeah, that's that. I am looking forward to the other gear, uh, the Trilithium enhanced stuff. So like I said, once I get all of the components for that set, I will make a video about it. Put it on a ship, on a phaser based ship, and I will make a video about it. Until then, um, that has been beyond the Nexus. I really enjoyed the mission. It was a lot of fun. LeVar Burton did a great job voicing Jordy LaForge. I look forward to having uh, more of him in the game because I really love the character. And um, the mission itself was fun. 
It was dis- it was a discovery. It was a mystery. It was it was just a lot of fun. Um, so I enjoyed that. I wish it had maybe been a little tougher in the battle department. I always like a really good fight, either space or ground. This one was very light in that department, but it was good on story. So anyway, we've got this big mystery. Who is this alien? Post your uh, theories below because I've got no idea, but I'm interested to find out for sure. Well, thank you all for watching. Let me know what you think of this mission and... Stay tuned for the next one.